it was massive. And it was moving towards me. I'm looking at it and it had to be at least 10 stories tall. Just this giant water wheel just moving across the field. And you go, so is the car in front of you stopped? Are the birds flying around stopped? Have you not been in the car accident? Time doesn't matter. There's neither the stop of time nor the slowdown of time. It simply doesn't exist. And this water wheel is moving across the field. And it's not a 10-story tall water wheel. It's the size of a small city. And it's on top of me now. I know what it is. I knew what it was from the moment I saw it. It, I knew when I saw it, I had seen it before I was born, and I was seeing it now that I was dying. What this was, was everything. And we've all seen it. We all saw it before we were born. We will all see it before we die. And I had a weird sense of familiarity with this alien force that I was now swept up in. It hits me, and I felt myself sucked into the paddle of one of these wheels. And in each of these wheels, the water, which is the best way I can describe it. I'm not saying that it was made of wood, it actually had a structure, but it simply was a universal force that my mind interpreted in the way a human mind would interpret these things. I am swept up into this paddle, and in this paddle is water, but the water is an ocean, and the ocean is a reality. And I realize in that moment when I'm swept up in that paddle what has happened. I was not supposed to die in this intersection. The universe was there to correct the mistake. I now understood everything about The next thing I know, I'm in another paddle, another universe, and I have forgotten everything I learned in the last universe. And I'm trapped in this churning mass of water. And I realize that the universe is trying to sort it out, that I was not supposed to die in this intersection, that somehow this water wheel This thing that we know of before we live, before we die, was trying to correct this. And now I understand why I'm... And the next thing I know, I'm back in another water paddle. And every time I ended up in another water paddle, I lost all knowledge previously gained from the last one. At this point, I'm panicking. Because I realize that something is wrong with reality. And every time I start to make a realization, every time I start to try to figure things out and actually learn about the reality that I'm in that led me to that point in that water wheel, I'm violently thrust into the next reality and have to start the journey over again trying to figure out what is going on. I can't, it's not like my consciousness was being destroyed each time. It was such an alien experience that I can't even really put it into words. Now, when I first go into the water wheel, I see my car destroyed. And I'm trying to figure things out, and I'm trying to put things together, exactly what's going on. And then I'm thrust into the next water wheel, and my car is destroyed. And I'm trying to see these things and trying to figure it out. But from what I can piece together with what limited fragments of memory I have left, There were parts of the water wheel that were not close to the reality that I started off in. Things seemed so different, I couldn't comprehend them. Now, around this time, which is a hard word to use in a story like this, I realized that this multiverse, this everything... It didn't exist outside of space-time. It was a space-time. Was relentless. I was an error in the programming. I was not supposed to have died. 
And it was based, I felt like it was giving me a choice that I needed to pick a reality to go into to correct the error. I knew if I picked a reality where I died in that car crash, I would go into that car, I would bleed out, die, and that water wheel would come start moving across that field again. And that scared me more than anything. The idea that if I picked wrong, that this whole process would start over again and I'd have to learn all these lessons again. That frightened me more than anything. So it was giving me a choice, but it wouldn't let me choose death. But I had the feeling that if I did not choose something soon, it would choose a reality for me. And who knows where that would be? Who knows where I would end up? Because it seemed that, again, can't really use this word, but the longer this process went on, the realities became less and less recognizable to what I knew. But... At some point, I started to recognize the realities again. Kind of similar. Less alien. These ones seemed right. And the next thing I knew, I was slowly driving down that road towards that intersection. Hadn't crossed it yet. No other driver, nothing. And as I came up to the stop sign, I slowly hit the brakes. Went to the stop sign and waited for the other car to roar past the 90 miles an hour. There was no car. There was no other driver. I did not die that day. How many times have you almost died? Like, the weird thing is, is there have been times where I go, man, I almost died. Like, I I think I told you this story before. Apparently, and I'm not 100% sure on this because my doctor and my mom have two different opinions, but... Apparently, I had a heart attack when I was born, and they had to bring me, they had to, like, do a little baby, just clear, just, they were, like, using, like, a 9-volt battery and just poking me, licking it, and then poking me in the chest. My mom says that didn't happen, but my medical reports do. I go, well, mom, maybe they didn't tell you, but she's like, I'm pretty sure they would tell me if my baby was getting, like, see, like, they're doing little press compressions on little Jason. But there are so many times like that that may not have happened, but there are other times where I go, man, I almost died, like car accidents and things like that. And you think how many times that I didn't die, like didn't even know I was going to die. Like I'm sitting here in this chair and then like a small airplane crashes into my apartment, but it didn't happen. And I would never know it was going to happen. Does that happen? Do you almost die? I mean, you could almost die every single day. Car almost hits you. Blimp, (laughs) blimp attack. Angry blimp terrorists dropping other blimps on top of you whole host of things slipping in your shower and he remembers his whole experience well not every experience but he remembers the he doesn't remember each version of the wheel but he remembers the wheel itself for whatever reason which almost seems like an other glitch in the system that he even remembers this happened does that water wheel come for us all at the end do when we die do we join the wheel do we go to heaven or hell Do we join our loved ones? Do we become part of a greater universe? Or is the theory of quantum suicide, where we simply don't die, we shift to a reality where we survived that event? Is that what the water wheel does for everybody? And no one ever dies. And every time you see someone die, they're simply dying in your reality, but in another reality, they live on. Do people we see as 80 years old, 90 years old on their deathbed who pass away, do we see them older in our timeline because that's how our brain is structured, but in their primary timeline, they're still young and healthy? They simply shift and start the learning process all over again. The water wheel may be reality itself. It may be a correcting mechanism for reality. It could be the delusion of a man. It could be a daydream. But one thing's for certain. One thing's for certain. We'll never know the answer. Because even if we figured it out, we most likely just got slotted into another dimension where we never saw the wheel itself. Just a vague, comforting memory of the time we realized death is not the end of us. 
deadrabbitradio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at Jason O. Carpenter. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great day. Thanks. Okay, we're back. This is the outro. I'll be completely honest. I'm not for sure what the word abides means. It's so funny. Just when I said that title, I was like, what? Like, I'm, I, the reason why I titled it the... This is the behind-the-scenes stuff that I hope you guys enjoy. The reason why I titled it The Multiverse Abides is because the book, The Earth Abides. So I assume... I, I should check that out. Now nah, I'm too lazy. I've already... This is supposed to be my week off. And yesterday's episode, I recorded a 20-minute outro. I need to take a break. But... I'm pretty sure abides means last a long time. Ah, never mind. I'm going to look it up. Hold on. I, I'm going to guess it means um, is around for a while. Nope. Oh, this is interesting. Wait, what? Abide. Ex- <laughs> you like this behind the scenes? You like this behind the scenes art? I'm reading definitions. Abide. Accept or act in accordance with. I would say I would abide by their decision. Informal. Be unable to tolerate. I cannot abide it. So what does that mean? The multiverse abides? I guess that would work because the multiverse... Oh, wait, no. So I titled this episode The Multiverse Abides because of the classic novel The Earth Abides by author... And the reason why I chose the word abides is because it actually means it's unable to tolerate something. In this case, the multiverse is unable to tolerate the narrator. How's that for a save? I probably could have just had that if I hadn't added the whole part where I'm Googling it. But that was true. I didn't know what the word abides mean. Obviously. So this was an interesting episode. It's an interesting episode for a couple different reasons. And yes, I'm going to talk about the Trump UFO thing in a second because we have new news on that. But let's talk about the structure of the episode first off. This is one of the main reasons why I don't do in-jokes or callbacks. You you guys should know, if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, I will, li- I will do callbacks in the same episode. So sometimes... I recently had a, there was a guy named Stevens, there's a guy named Stevens who was masturbating on a woman's keyboard or something like that. He popped up in the second story, like, I'll do callbacks within within the same episode, but this is why I tend not to, because if you had just listened to episode 242, you'd be like, what is he talking about fat witches? Now, I'm going to recommend listening, because I actually was, this is one of the, if you listen to the episode, it is super weird. It's one of those observational things that I've seen over the years myself. But I don't remember the actual episode. I had to look it up. It's episode 237, Are Fat People Powerful Wizards? And this is the description. Today we were about to cover two topics. So I'm assuming I got, I had something planned and I just got uh, distracted halfway through one of the topics. But today we were about to cover two topics, but instead talked about weight gaining witches, which is something that I've observed over the years. Weight gaining witches, fat people magic, and how to create a voodoo doll for weight loss from toilet paper. So I vaguely know what I'm talking about in that last sentence, but that episode sounds super intriguing. But let's say that episode 242 was the first episode you ever heard of Dead Rabbit Radio. Let's say that a friend recommended, hey, checking out the show, and you just landed on that episode. You'd have no idea what the first five minutes were. You're like, what? And it's funny, it's a joke, and I actually was apologizing to people who make Lifetime movies because I do watch a lot of Lifetime movies. I have been watching a lot lately. It was funny, and I did want to apologize, but did I necessarily have to put it in the beginning of that episode? Does it work in any fashion? If you didn't know what I was talking about, there's no context to it. That's why I don't do... And when I was listening to this, I was like, oh my god, this is kind of cringy. During the week, it worked. And it's okay to throw in an in-joke there. The other day I said we land, landed in a brad in the middle of the woods. A brad is a broad clearing in a forest. Been talking about brads earlier in the week. That's fine. If you didn't know the joke, you'd go, uh, what? What's a brad in the forest? You wouldn't even know it was an inside joke. You might think I just mispronounced something, which I never do. 
But in that one case, you may think I would mispronounce something. In this case, if that was the first episode you listened to, you'd be like, what in the hell is this 